Sports. Dave, AF5DN here. Let's move on to the next set of questions. Okay, let's start here with uh, question T1B11. What emission modes are permitted in the mode restricted subbands at 50 to 50.1 megahertz and 144 to 144.1 megahertz? Your potential answers are A, CW only, B, CW and RTTY, SSB, that's single sideband only, or CW and single sideband. And as we see, they're referencing part 97, section 305 A and C. Well, if we go grab the, uh, the real text here, we see, except as specified elsewhere in this part, an amateur station may transmit a CW emission on any frequency authorized to the control operator. And C will be a station may transmit the following emission types on the frequencies indicated as authorized to the control operator subject to the standards specified in 97307. All right. Now, if we look at this, 97.307 basically gives us a chart and nobody knows how to read. So, <laughs> so what I'm going to refer you to is the ARRL band chart. I uh, introduced you to this in the previous lesson. And you can uh, download the full chart at ARRL.org. And I have a link to this chart on AF5DN uh, right around the, where you will find this video also posted. So, how do we look at this? All right, well, basically, here we go. 50 to 50.1 megahertz. You can see there, there's a little white blotch with a squiggly line in it. And 44.0 to 44.1 megahertz. So you can look down there and you see the same thing. There's a little white block with a squiggly line in it. And if you look it over here to the key, you will see that that white block with the squiggly line means it is CW only. So the answer is A, C, W only. Now we've not talked too much about modes, but this would be a good time to start talking about mode. And C, W is uh, considered continuous wave. Uh, it is a, a solid transmission stream that's actually intermittent uh, on and off. Uh, this is typically used in Morse code and some of the other key for functions. Okay, let's start uh, now in uh, T1 section C. And T1 section C is going to deal with operator classes and stations call sign. Operator classes, sequential, special event, and vanity call sign systems, international communications, reciprocal operations, Station license and license E, places where amateur services is regulated by the FCC. Name and address on ULS, lease, license terms, renewal, and grace periods. So the first question in this series is going to be, which type of call sign has a single letter in both the prefix and suffix? Your choices are vanity. Sequential, special event, or in memoriam. Let's take a look because they are referencing 97.3A11iii. So if we grab the uh, A the 311, it talks about call sign system, the method used to select a call sign for amateur stations over the air identification purposes. The call sign systems are, and then we start into the little I and III, III. So we'll jump down here to III and see that special event call sign system. Well, that answered the question right there. Let's uh, look at it a little bit further. 
The call sign is selected by the station licensee from a list of call signs shown on a common database coordinated, maintained, and disseminated by the amateur station special event call sign database coordinators. Whew, that's a mouthful. The call sign must have the single letter prefix K, N, or W, followed by a single numerical 0 through 9, followed by a single letter A through W or Y or Z. And it says, for example, K1A. Special event call sign is a substitute for the call sign shown on the station license E grant while the station is transmitting. The FCC will issue public announcements detailing the procedure of special event call sign system. Well, that's a mouthful. Let's take a look. That's going to mean our answer here is C, special event. Well, what do they mean exactly by special event? That's, you know, I think you need a better explanation. Well, here is a poster from a real special event. And you can see the call sign was W0L, and that falls into this category. And this was from the St. Louis and Suburban Radio Club back in 2010. And it was a meeting or a special event to uh, celebrate the 83rd anniversary of Charles Lindbergh leaving Lambert Field. So, since it was a special event, they coordinated and got their special, special call sign for the event. That's a lot of words. All right, question C2. Which of the following is a valid U.S. amateur radio station call sign? Your possible answers are KMA3505, W3ABC, KDK, A, or 11Q1176. Now for this, I actually go to the FCC website and I find their call sign chart. I'm going to pull up a little section of this chart here so that we can uh, refer to this. And you see that it uh, talks about regions, prefix, and suffix letters. What does it mean? Okay, well, let me throw my call sign up here, AF5DN. We'll break that down and see if that helps us any. So, first of all, region. What is a region? Well, the United States is broken up into regions, and I live in Texas, so that you can see my, my region code is 5. There you go. So, then the next one is the prefix, AF, two letters. And the next one is suffix, letters. So, do we have anything in common? Here's a prefix, a region code, and a suffix. I'm going to take this uh, chart and blow it up a little bigger here, and then we'll refer to that. And let's take a look and break this down. As you can see, we have a region code. We have prefix numbers, and if you look at the chart, you can uh, notice that all of the prefixes are letters. And then we have a suffix, and again, all the suffixes are letters. So let's see if we can apply some logic and uh, eliminate some of these potential answers. And the first thing we can get rid of is this one up here, 5 because we know that our suffixes can only be letters, not numbers. That means we can also exclude this one because it's a number and our suffixes are letters. We can get rid of this one here because it has no region code, which leaves us with the answer of W3ABC as a valid call sign. But I want to go a little bit further and see if we can uh, really break this down. And I, I'm going further because I had a real difficulty myself with this call sign thing, the way that most 
um, online classes presented it. The way the way it was shown didn't really make a lot of sense until I saw this chart, and until I saw it on a real code. So the first thing we want to do is look at region one through ten because you know I'm in region five. I live in Texas. So if we look down here, we can tell that we can eliminate these guys here uh, because their prefixes in region 10 do not start with an A. Likewise, this region prefix does not start with an A, which leaves us up here with uh, a potential of the amateur extra class but the suffix is not a one so what do we have we have a two letter prefix with the first letter starting with a and a suffix of two digits so that would indicate that this is an amateur extra class license all right Wow, I can't believe the time for this video is up already. Those three questions really consumed a lot of time. But I hope I'm explaining these things in enough detail so that you're not just memorizing the questions, but actually understanding uh, the meaning behind them, what, what's actually going on with it. Okay, so remember, if uh, like always, if you want to repeat this video, there should be a link here that says repeat the video. If you uh, want to continue on to the next one, there's a button over there that says continue on. And if you've come to this video in the middle, go ahead and click the button that says jump to the start and watch the entire series of videos so that you get all of the questions. I am AF5DN. I appreciate your time watching. Thank you.